Um, thanks so much for, for having Teach for America as part of this program today. We're really happy to be here. Um, I'm going to spend the first few minutes of this talk talking a little bit about our sort of philosophical approach to what we do and then spend the next part talking sort of more nuts and bolts about how we approach our program. Uh, you all are well aware of the issues of the achievement gap. Here are a couple of statistics of the unfortunately many that I could put up there that represent the achievement gap that exists in this country. And Teach for America's entire program is focused around building a movement to end education inequity. So what, what we do is really to think about how we can approach that problem um, in, within the context in, within the context of our organization such that we reach this point when one day all children in this nation have the opportunity to attain an excellent education. So that, that's, our, that's our entire mission. Um, let me talk a little bit about how we think about that. So, I think I'm going forward, but I'm not. There we go. All right, I got it. Um, so, in thinking about the achievement gap, we basically, you know, our sort of theoretical framework, you've got schools with the least capacity on a whole bunch of different levels in terms of financial resources, in terms of human resources, and on down the line, who are working with the students who have the greatest needs. Again, on a whole bunch of different fronts, they're coming to school with all kinds of different things that they've been experiencing in, in their lives, including, of course, starting each year at an academic um, disadvantage. So, so you're, that, that's what you're working with. Um, and when we think about that, we think about a, addressing those issues in a couple of ways. One is, from an immediate impact perspective, you need to have outstanding teachers who are making a difference directly with kids in these communities every day, trying to close the achievement gap in a very direct way for those individual kids. At the same time, we think that even thousands of really committed, outstanding teachers cannot do this alone. It is just not, it's not possible. And you need to be able to address some of those root causes. So the second, the second um, way we think about this is in a long-term impact perspective, where we seek to build this this core of leaders who will go on to, to impact the kinds of issues that affect the achievement gap in all different sectors. So that certainly includes in education, where most of our folks continue to work, but it also includes people working in all different sectors, trying to get at those root issues. Um, so how do we do this? Um, oh well, one, before, before how we do this, just one quick slide on, on our impact. You all have some information in your folder and Steve Glazerman from Mathematica is going to be talking a little bit about this later, so I'm not going to talk a lot about the impact piece, but that first, that first blurb there comes from a recent study that was released by Mathematica that was based on a random assignment evaluation of Teach for America that looked at our core members' impact on student achievement. Um, and, and you've got a little issue brief in the back of your binder that goes into more detail on that. Um, the second two blurbs are from our principal survey that, we ha that an independent organization um, administers each year to try and find out from the perspective of the principals where we place our teachers how, how uh, helpful they think they are as part of their, their academic programs at the school level. And you can see that the principals are pretty positive about Teach for America. Um, so now let me get into how we, how we actually operate as a program. And I'm just going to talk through our program continuum from the recruitment phase all the way through the point at which our folks are called alumni, which is after the two years that they're a part of our program. Um, so recruitment. We have a very aggressive recruitment strategy. Um, and you'll see in that red box at the bottom that this year that resulted in, we, this is just, these are hot off the press numbers because we just had our second application deadline, 17,000 people applied to join Teach for America this year. Um, that's actually a 30% jump from last year, um, which was a jump from the year before. So there's a lot of interest among people, particularly on college campuses, who really do want to commit the incredible hard work that it takes to close the achievement gap for kids in this country. Um, our strategy in terms of recruitment involves mass marketing, just getting the word out about what Teach for America is and, and what you need to do to be a part of it. But it also involves a very specific headhunting strategy where we actually build relationships with student leaders and 
uh, administrators <laughs> and professors on college campuses and have them identify for us top prospects in all different academic fields who they think really could be potential future leaders. And we have literally thousands of one-on-one -on -one meetings between our recruitment staff and those top prospects on campuses. So we really, we really hit college campuses very hard in terms of recruitment. Um, we've got a special focus at the recruitment stage on people of color and on math and science majors. The selection phase, so once they've applied, we bring our folks through a very rigorous selection process during which we're trying to identify people who have the kinds of skills and qualities that are going to allow them both to have that immediate impact on student achievement that I talked about, but also to be part of this long-term force of leaders. And that box at the bottom gives you a little sense of the uh, sort of caliber of people who end up being part of Teach for America. At the placement phase, right now we've got 3,000 core members who are teaching in 22 urban and rural regions. That's across 82 districts across the country. And this gives you a little sense of, of our geography. Um, we are in exclusively urban and rural communities. Our pre-service training includes an extensive uh, curriculum which our core members actually receive upon matriculating to the program. So they're expected to do a lot of reading and observation in public schools and some written analysis of what, of, of what they're reading and seeing before they arrive at our summer training institute, which is an intensive five-week program that involves a clinical piece where they're actually teaching in summer schools with full responsibility for kids, but they're also taking courses during the course of the summer. And, uh, and our principals at the schools where we place our teachers pretty across the board find that the training that they get is, is, is effective. Um, once our folks finish their pre-service training, they go on to these 22 different sites. And during the two years that they're part of our program, we have an ongoing support program for them. So we've got staff in each of our regions who meets with our core members regularly, observes them in the classroom, and spends a lot of time talking with them about where are your kids now? Where do you need them to be based on the ambitious goals that you've developed that are based on you know, state and district standards and, and what you know you need to do to catch your kids up? And then how are you tracking their progress along the way? So we provide a lot in the way of tools to help them do that because for the most part, we, don't, we find that they don't get enough of that kind of support at the school and district level to be able to really look at student data and figure out where your kids are and how you can move them. Um, and then once they complete the two years as part of our program, they become part of this alumni network. We actually have uh, a fair bit of infrastructure within our program to track alumni, to keep in touch with them, to know what they're doing, but also to continue to provide resources to them. So we try to network our alumni with each other. We try and connect them to, to ongoing career opportunities because we really believe that this force ongoing is really going to going to have a real impact on some of those cause issues of the achievement gap and we want to connect them with those kinds of resources to help them to help them do that work of our 9000 alumni currently so these are all the folks who since 1990 um, on through you know 2 years ago who finished finished the program 63% uh, are working full-time in education. So most of them do stay in education. A lot of them are teaching. A lot of them are principals. Um, as Steve mentioned earlier, two-thirds of the KIPP principals are Teach for America alumni. And we've got folks who are principals in charter and traditional public schools across the country who are doing just incredible things there. And we also have people who are working in education but outside of, of the school. So a lot of people in ed policy. We've got folks who have been elected to school boards. and. Then we have a group of people who choose not to stay in education and go into other sectors. We see that as critically important, and we really don't want, we don't want people to miss that about Teach for America, that we really do believe that people who go into law, medicine and public health fields, business, and who bring with them a deep understanding of what the challenges are within low-income communities, but also what the opportunities and possibilities are, thanks, that that makes a huge difference for, for the, addressing the needs that, that we need to address. I look forward to hearing folks' comments and questions.